Last week, I unveiled three starter Pokemon that would fit well into a hypothetical region based on the state of California. I introduced all three, explaining a bit about what animals they're based on, their real-world cultural inspirations, and how they'd use their biology to fit into the climates they inhabit. Of course, I tried to strike a balance between well-researched theming, drawing inspiration from the rich history of the west coast of the United States, while also making their designs well-balanced and appealing so that they could be good starter Pokemon and the mascots of a hypothetical region. And of course, just like every starter Pokemon, they eventually evolve. So today I'll be showing off the second stage evolutions of these guys. A very important stage where they become slightly more powerful, while still having that awkward middle stage look we all know and love. Their designs will also be an important stepping stone in hinting at their final forms, where their inspirations, secondary types, and personalities will really shine. So without further ado, let's jump into the middle stages. In the last video, we met Cactup, a shy desert-dwelling canine who hides in thick, succulent vegetation. I lean somewhat into the culture of the American Southwest, basing Cactup off of Chihuahuas, Cholos, and Coyotes. As I discussed, I was very intrigued by the role of Coyotes in Native American folklore, typically as mischievous trickster figures of the night, who are standoffish when it comes to interactions with humankind, but also have a wicked sense of curiosity and sometimes even malevolence. As I mentioned, all three of these starters will have a balanced mix of animal inspirations and also real-world culture in some subtle way. This is supposed to show how these Pokemon are very much interlinked with humanity. So when I was figuring out what to turn Cactup into, I knew I was going to keep it a canine, obviously. I wanted to give it a slightly spookier vibe, to show how this creature becomes increasingly more solitary as it grows, and its shy nature gives way to a more mischievous one. But it's still going to be pretty cute. It is based off of dogs, after all. So all that gave us Lobuaro from Lobo, the Spanish word for wolf, and Seguaro, a type of cactus. Lobuaro are highly adapted to live in the harsh deserts. They're very shy and reclusive, rarely leaving a small pack. In some cases, Lobuaro will break off from their packs and survive on their own. They hunt prey by stalking it carefully, then pouncing without making a sound. Their unique eyes, which contain thousands of photoreceptor rods, are perfect for seeing in the dead of night, which is when they're most active. Upon evolution, the flower on its tail blossoms and emits a sweet scent. They use the scent to mark their territories with a distinct smell. They avoid confrontation, but they'll defend their dens with fierce conviction if needed. So like I mentioned, Laboro are supposed to show the transformation of the sweet Cactup into a larger dog that has more of a wicked energy to it. It's based off of both coyotes and wolves this time, and its body is sturdier and more muscular than its predecessor to show its hunting spirit. I also give it a rugged texture on its fur to show how it has rough cactus spikes all over it and its tail can be swung with three hard cactus stalks at the end of it, with that pink flower at the end blossoming, loosely inspired by Acotillo and Saguaro blossoms, but mainly the night blossoming Sirius, a type of cactus that only blossoms at night once a year. So this evolution line has a special connection to the nighttime and the moon, both in its habits of stalking and hunting prey at night, but also in its very biology. Plus, when I unveiled Cactup, I mentioned that the designs of these Pokemon also take inspiration, particularly in the eyes, from the candy schools of Mexican folklore, which are common representations of death and the afterlife. So all that might give you a pretty good hint as to what the line's final evolution might end up looking like. Next up, let's take a look at the fire line, where I unveiled Ursut, the adorable fire bear who lives in redwood forests and tribes, using its fire powers in a gentle way so it doesn't harm the trees it calls home. For Ursut, I designed a cute Pokemon based off of grizzly and black bears, two powerful animals that roam the forests of the Pacific Northwest. I made sure to account for the behavior of real-life bears, but I also leaned somewhat into what bears represent to the humans that inhabit these forests. In Native American folklore, bears usually represent wisdom, prosperity, and strength, so I made sure that Ursut, while cute, would inevitably become something immensely powerful, almost like a protector of the forest and worshipped in mysterious ways. With that in mind, I came up with Brewer Smoke. From Bruin, a term for bears, and smoke. Brewer Smoke live and cooperate in large tribes, but they're also quite solitary. Expert scouts, a single Brewer Smoke may leave its tribe for days at a time, foraging alone and fending for itself. Despite a fearsome appearance, it prefers to eat berries over meat. Their ears are extremely sensitive and help them pick up unnecessary sunlight levels, which helps them recharge their fire through UV synthesis. When enraged, the fur patterns on its face, chest, and ears turn red hot and glow. They'll scorch slabs of wood, turning them into charcoal. Scientists have attempted to decipher these markings to see if they're a social ritual for them, or if they're signs of practical communication. So Brewer Smoke is inspired once again by black and grizzly bears, 
Its fur color is somewhat in between the two to make it unique, and also allude to black charcoal because of the fire typing. I also made the flame-shaped imprint on its belly more complex than Ursa's to look like tribal patterns. This could be said about the markings on its face, too. They make it look fierce, but they also allude to the tribal patterns of Pacific Northwest totem poles and artwork in general. These are huge parts of indigenous culture up there, and they have strong ties to mysticism and nature, which are worshipped heavily, so it seemed perfect for this bear Pokemon. Through this, I hope to represent a nice blend of humanity and nature in this line, showing how Ursid, Bruismoke, and its evolution have been respected and worshipped by humanity throughout time, as a gentle protector of nature who can be fierce when it needs to be. So keep those ideas in mind for the final evolution. Finally, let's move on to the waterline. Last time we met Puffet, an adventurous and feisty little shorebird who has dreams of exploring the rough seas. I based Puffet off of none other than Puffins, which is an adorable type of bird found in the northern Atlantic and northern Pacific Oceans. Just like the other two, I also made sure to include a tie to humanity, this time with maritime culture. Shorebirds have been seen both as good and bad omens to sailors in western culture, so I wanted to make Puffet allude to a cute little sailor, and that nautical motif will continue with the rest of the evolution line, showing how this already confident seabird grows stronger and furthers its maritime skills, helping out or even guiding humans along the seas. So with that in mind, let's meet Skip Piper, from Skipper, a term for nautical crewmen, and Piper, a type of shorebird that lives on rocky sandbars. Skip Piper are excellent navigators. They're friendly and full of vitality, so they're often used to assist humans on maritime adventures as able crewmen. In nature, they live in colonies, building complex nests in rocky coves. They're highly social, and they're very protective of young Puffet. They have robust motion sensitivity, often digging deep into rocky sands to search for prey deep underneath. Occasionally, they'll dive deep into icy waters, and they always have the ability to return, no matter how strong the current is. Their wings have the ability to fly, but they prefer to run and splash about in the shallow tides, using long, powerful legs. The fastest ones are the most respected. So these guys are mainly inspired by sandpipers and other types of wading birds, to show how it's adapted well to its habitat on sandbars along the seaside. Its long legs and its short wings means that it's still better at swimming and running than flying. So spoiler alert, it won't be getting flying as its secondary type. I also made this guy a lot more lanky than Puffet, to represent a stereotypical low-ranking sailor that hasn't spent much time at sea, and isn't that buff yet. Think Popeye before spinach though it will eventually turn into something much more powerful. I also kept the color scheme of Puffet because the navy, teal, and white alluded to sailor uniforms nicely, but here I added gold stripes on its belly to look like the two stripes of the apprentice rank crewmen in American Navy, because like I mentioned, these guys are slowly gaining an excellent sense of the ocean and are used as trusted crewmen by human civilization. The two feathers on its head are meant to look like knots on navy uniforms, but it also alludes to the feathers of tufted puffins, so Skipiper has strong ties to multiple types of shorebirds and also some nautical themes, so remember that for the final evolution, where it's going to evolve into a powerful seafaring bird, with an added twist. So those are the three middle stages of Cactup, Ursut, and Puffet. Now you've seen two-thirds of these evolution lines, where cute beginning forms turned into somewhat awkward middle stages that are verging on something very powerful. I also hope these forms have fleshed out their inspirations a bit more, both biologically and culturally, hopefully cueing you in onto what their final forms will eventually become and represent. So stay tuned for the next video in just four days, where I turn these guys into their final forms and complete the California region's evolution lines. Which starter would you pick, and are you satisfied with how they've evolved so far? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to make their final forms as amazing as they can be. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content.